Missouri. Yeah, upper upper state Missouri. That's okay. where they said it was. All right. All right. Yeah, they said call sign. The name of it is sign. Sign Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> Mormons believe that such clothing was provided as part of the religious instructions given to Adam and Eve by God. It is often referred to as a garment of the royal priesthood. And this again, you see, it's from their church. I'm not making any of this up. I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to present it. Now, in 1990, there was a more changes as a result of that move of Godmakers 1 and 2. The penalties were completely deleted. And the penalties were specifically the same thing as, as the Mormons. They had to, uh, the, the hand across the throat. Uh, the Masons. Uh, talk about the. the yeah. yeah, Jim, tell us about yeah, that. They, as you stand there and you're going through the, the uh, entered apprentice degree, that's the initiation. Okay. And, and the, the, each degree has a different sign. And, and it, you, you kneel at the altar with the Bible there and, and, and the, the signs. And then you, to, to, uh, before you will allow yourself or will reveal the secrets of Freemasonry, you will allow your throat to be cut from ear to ear. And, then, and every ritual is different. The next one is the fellow craft is your heart is torn out. You know, your chest is torn open and your heart is out. And then the Master Mason's degree is your, your belly your is bowels. ripped open, bowels are poured out. And, and it goes on. And you, I can find it on the Internet. And we might do we may do one on Freemasons we before will. we get but there. Because I've, I've got a PowerPoint. Has any of that been changed today since there's so much expo exposure on some of the rituals? Not, not, not that I know of. Not that I know of. It has now, Mormonism has. As a matter of fact, even if we go back to this picture here, we see this, this, this drawn here. And what they're doing, this is referred to as the five points of fellowship. Right. And in Freemasonry, it's called five points, five of, fellowship. points of fellowship. Yeah. He didn't even change it. And, and the, the secret word of a master mason can only be whispered in the ear or spoken at low breath and on the five points of fellowship. So, and basically what it is, it's mouth to ear, uh, hand to back, knee to yeah, knee. knee, to knee. Yeah. Foot, I think foot to foot. foot, to foot. But yeah, now you're knee. saying there that those, those four things were completely deleted. This was removed because of the fact that yeah, it so exposed, much exposed by it. Exactly. But it was meant to be secret. But once it's known by everybody, then they, they, they look and say, well, okay, well, let's get rid of it. Now, if you're getting rid of it, was it necessary in the first place? It wasn't necessary. Either there's an error in removing it or there's an error in placing it in the first place. Yeah. Either way, we know that this was... So they're the standing case. there with one leg with their, their knees touching each other, a handshake going underneath the coat, and then an arm around the shoulder, and I can't tell whether the guy's kissing the no, other he's one. Whispering, he's whispering. whispering the token or the, 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 the But the that practice word. was completely deleted. In Mormonism, right. And the next <laughs> thing that was, that was removed yeah. was the sectarian minister. Now, what they would do at the very beginning as part of the process is there was this huge drama. And the drama would go on for hours, basically. And one of the characters in this drama was this, this sectarian minister, which was to symbolize Christian ministers. And it was a mockery. It was they were making fun of him, and that has been removed because it was brought out in the movies. Uh, sorry, go ahead. The in interesting thing that I that I asked people, and I asked it on that uh, that document that I have on uh, FrancisandFriends.com. Uh, can we find the roots of Freemasonry in the Bible? Is is if it's so great, and if it's so honorable, why do you need these horrible death oaths to keep your mouth A shut? A secret. Yeah. There we go. So it, it's the question is is why. Why do you have to take these horrible oaths to keep your mouth shut about a so-called uh, uh, Christian? They claim to be Christians, uh, and 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 Freemasonry. Of course, they can be whatever you can be, whatever you want to be, and be a Freemason. You can be a Satanist. Uh, it doesn't right. matter, just as long as you believe in a God. Uh, so why, why, if it's so great and you love it and you'll do this, why do you need the death oaths? Why do you need these horrible oaths? Good point, Cam. And in Christianity, it's the opposite. The, the thing with Christianity is we want the gospel to be said. We want people to know. Shout it from the rooftop. Shout it from the rooftop. Yes. Go and tell them. You know, that's yeah. what Jesus said. That's you know, that, that whispering in the ear. Uh, he said, what I whisper in your ear, you shout it from the housetop. Right? Amen. So Amen. That's, okay. that's the difference in Christianity and these cults and old cults. In 2005, the washing and the anointing rituals were made completely symbolic. See, what we see here, this picture was actually from Godmakers uh, 1. Uh, this lady here, and, and she, every part of her body would be touched by this other woman washing in preparation. Well, now it's symbolic. It's only touching of the head. I think that was a very good move. It doesn't make sense that they would do it the other way. Now, let's talk about their salvation. Salvation is only offered to those who obtain, who are obedient to the teachings of the leaders of the LDS Church. Same thing with, with uh, Jehovah Witness. 
you have to be you have to follow very clearly the teachings of the watchtower. Well, with the LDS, you have to follow the teachings of the prophet of that age. And so you can't have salvation without strict obedience to the church. That would be like the Assemblies of God saying, or the uh, Church of Jesus Christ uh, of prophecy saying, look, if you disobey us, you're not going to heaven. Well, the Pope, this present Pope, that's not long after his that he right, assumed the throne, he publicly made the statement that Catholicism is the only true religion and the only people that can call themselves Christian are Roman Catholics. And most cults say that, Donnie. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to belong to this. We got them in charismatic circles. But the other the other Pope that died, he shied away from that because he was trying to bring more religions under the arm of Catholicism. Well, he was trying to follow Vatican II more, yeah. more and more, more very closely. But this Pope right. came out and just said what they believed all along right. very openly that you're not a Christian unless you're Roman Catholic. You can't go to heaven unless you're a member of the Roman Catholic Church. And right. the LDS Church says they are Christian above all other Christians because they have the final testament of Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right. Salvation is only offered to those who are obedient to the teachings of the LDS Church. The second part, I, I, I should have rewarded it. Without a formal membership in the Mormon Church, Mormon baptism, participating in, in, this, in the secret temple rituals, participating in marriage, and the financial support of the LDS Church, you cannot be saved. Now, the aspect of the temple rituals, my, my understanding is this, that if you want to go into the highest place of the celestial heaven, then you have to go through this. You have to be, and according to Joseph Smith, you also have to be polygamous. Okay, so there's three levels of heaven. There are three levels of heaven. The, the three levels are the celestial, the terrestrial, and then the telestial. Now, telestial doesn't exist in a word other than in Mormonism. Celestial and terrestrial are, are there, terrestrial being the earth, and then celestial. And, and these are the three levels of the Mormon heaven. Uh, hell is, is in nothing more than a purgatory. It's a place of torment to try to purify. Uh, in one quote, and I wish I would put it on there, but I will, will bring it up in case we're going to ask questions on it. It says it was a place of uh, a continual torment for Mormons who leave Mormonism, those who have fallen away from it. Exaltation of Godhead in the highest part of the celestial kingdom, which is the ultimate goal, is based upon individual good works and personal merit. Now again, not all Mormons know about this, but this is a Mormon teaching. And not all Mormons have gone through the temple rituals that would be necessary for this. Exaltation, exaltation means to become a god with your own planet and your celestial wives, incorporates ruling a new world and a sexual procreation in order to produce spiritual children in whom eventually will be embodied and inhabit that world. So they believe that every one of us has a spirit child. Every one of us was a spirit child on one oh, of these okay. trillions of plants. Now, that is why a lot of Mormons have large families. Because it is their teaching that there is a spirit child somewhere that needs a body so that they can go through the process of exaltation themselves. But Mike, the primary reason for that was building up the Mormon church. More sure. than anything yeah. else, they use that for an excuse. But I guarantee you, just like just like Catholicism and just like all these others, Islam, Islam. we're going we're to we're keep these people in whatever our cult is or old right. cult. We're going to have these children and keep them, brainwash them, and keep them in there. And that's that's I'm, I'm persuaded with the primary reason. Okay. 